All right, the second uh, assignment that is to be done in Blender is a person. We're going to start with just a very basic model and then alter it as we go. One of the things that they do mention at the beginning of this particular tutorial is how to select things in different ways. So I've kind of mentioned this before, but let's go over it again. So if I go into this object and into edit mode, if I want to select particular vertices, I can do that, well, A is to deselect and select all. So that's the letter A. Another thing you might want to do is you might want to individually click, holding down shift and right clicking on particular points. You can also do B for border select. And that will select everything within a box as you left click and drag. There is C, which is circle select. You scroll in and out to change the size, and then you just click and drag, and it selects the points you see. And then you hit escape to get out of the selection process. And then the final one I want to mention real quick is if you do control, and then left click and drag in a lasso sort of pattern, everything within your circle gets selected. Now one other thing I want to mention is that if you're in perspective view, or in any view for that matter, and you want to actually select points on the back side of an object, there's this little button right here called Limit to Visible. If you unclick that, then you can actually click on the far side. Now, it depends what you're doing. Sometimes you don't want to be able to click through to the back side of the menu and accidentally, say, delete a face on the far side. So it depends what you're doing. In this case, I probably want to select all of these. All right, so once I'm able to do that, what's the next step? What we're going to be doing is we're going to be extruding regions here. So Notice that this is the x-axis going left to right and z going up and down. So we're basically going to be extruding in units going up. Now one other thing to keep in mind is that as you extrude, you can hold down control as you're moving, and it'll actually have you move in units rather than just having the continuous thing. So if I switch back to Blender and extrude, notice that it's already in the z-axis, so I don't have to worry about that but it's continuous. So if I hold on Control, it'll click in Units. There we go. So now I have one of my units extruded. Although I was going in the Y axis. It turns out it doesn't matter so far, but depending on the tutorial, it may matter which direction you're going versus in the X axis, the Z axis, or the Y axis. All right, so there's that. Um, another thing that you can do is you can actually extrude by typing in a number. So if I extrude again and I type 2, that extrudes two Blender units in that direction. So oftentimes you can actually enter in a particular number if you want it to be an exact amount. You can even do decimals. You could do like 1.25 Blender units. All right, so I'm basically going to be making this kind of a shape and then pulling the leg down, and eventually I want just kind of this torso. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units up. Do 3 across. So I need to select these four points here. Extrude. 1, 2 over. Deselect them all. Reselect this part. Go down once twice, three, four times, extruding each time individually. All right, so now I need the top up here. So I need to go up one, two, three, four, five more. By the way, if you don't do this exactly, that is okay. If you can use some creativity in this, the main thing is that you know how to do these. Two, three, All right, and then I'm going to go out from that one. So actually, let's go one more up to get the neck. Then I'm going to select these ones, extrude on the side. Go out three, and then the other side. Magic. There we go. So that's the torso. Now I'm going to add in another object in order to do the circle. 
I'm actually going to make it as a separate object so that I can individually deal with the shapes on the sphere versus the shapes on the um, body itself. Also, if I add modifiers, if I try and put them together in the same mesh, and when I subsurface the body, it'll also try and subsurface the sphere. So, I'd like to uh, set the 3D uh, cursor um, just above the heads to the point where I want to add in the sphere. So right now it's down here. If I click up there, I'm going to want to look at it from multiple different angles. So in particular, I think I'm going to use one to basically put it right in the center, left clicking to place that. And then let's go into orthogonal mode to make sure that I have that more closely aligned. There we go. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So now I'm going to add in a mesh, which is an ICO sphere. And this is the number of subdivisions, which shows how smooth it is. So notice that's a little rough. I can increase that. Though keep in mind if you make it too smooth, then it takes a lot longer for the computer to deal with it. Now you may be thinking that is a very small head for that kind of body. So keep in mind that you can scale it up. And actually, I realize I just did this in edit mode, so these are two, these two are the same object. So one other thing that is useful to know is that, let's say I have these points and I want to make sure that they are a separate object. If you press the letter P, you can actually separate a selection. And what this does is, now if I go back into object mode, notice that they are two separate objects. If you ever want them to go back together, if I select both of these objects and do control J, you can join them. So now notice they are one object. When I go into edit mode, that's all the points. So I'm going to do, undo that so that I have two separate objects. So you can join and merge objects as you need to. P to separate them, Control J to join them. Um, the, it mentions some shortcuts in here. Shift A, for example, is a way to go ahead and add in the mesh with the uh, shortcut keys. Most of these shortcut keys, there's another way to get to it somewhere through the menus. So it's up to you how efficient you want to be. Shortcut keys are probably the fastest way to do it, but you don't necessarily need to remember all of them. 